we see that we need to clean the taxon data and we need to look at how to how to make this data homogeneous at a given point of time, at a given point in time, because data can actually change. Basically what we do is we try to reconcile our data with some known nomenclature, some known, some known taxonomy. <coughs> Probably one of the best taxonomies that are available is Species 2000. It's not the only one, but it collects a lot of taxonomies and it has reconciled a lot of, of names there. But it might not have everything. Uh, something like Edict Bio or uh, UBio might have more names of it, or, uh, more instances of names, but they not, might not be linked to the real. And they change in time. For instance, uh, this map here, I had to explain a little bit what it is. This, this, is, the, this is the tax of space in a database, which is just to, which means that every single point here is one name uh, as they were recorded. So that there is the first taxon name that ever entered in the database. And it goes down, and then it goes to the next column, and so forth. So it goes up, down, and then left to right. So the color means that this particular taxon is red, so it's probably <coughs> a record of an arthropod. Okay? So those are the names as they were entered from literature records. The name that the provider, in this case the literature authority, said or, or gave to that species. But if we take this list of names and we try to find what is the current accepted name, which we can do by querying a taxonomy, such as the species 2000 or UBI or whatever, we see that things change over time and they might even change of group. So this change that you see in color represents how the taxonomies have changed over time <coughs> when we compare the data with uh, two species 2000 in this case. <coughs> data, oh, sorry. data then evolve and we might resort to some correction techniques that might be more reliable than some of them might be reliable or more reliable than others. If we look at how fast we can do that, we see that trying to do an automatic checking is quite fast. You need your list of names, you need to submit this list of names to a service that will check the names and will tell you whether those names are valid or not. That's the easiest way. So it's fast, but it might not be too reliable. It might be free or it might be costly in terms of your time, but not too much. <coughs> you can use a local nomenclature, which means that you have a, your own copy of your taxonomy, your own copy of valid names, and you can check your names in your list against your valid copy of names. That's normally fast, and it's cost effective, although in times of war, too. You might resort to order or order your list. You order alphabetically your list, and quite easily you might see where a name changes place. And you can detect spelling errors there that way. But it's extremely labor intensive. Red means bad, green means good, yellow is something in between. So going by hand is extremely labor intensive. Although it's probably more reliable. Peer review. You have something who really knows things. If I wanted to check a bird list, I will send the check to the list to town, and I can rely. I can be confident that town will get the names right, but it will take an enormous amount of time. No, so it will take an enormous amount of cost. Yeah, that too. In the case of peer review, it's an enormous amount of cost, as opposed to manual name checks, which is something I do. It doesn't cost much. It doesn't cost me a lot. It costs a lot of work. If I send it to over to town, it doesn't cost me much in terms of labor, but it will cost me a lot of money, hopefully. <laughs> All right. Or you might resort to crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing is having a lot of people checking names. It's something that is currently done with birds, with plants, but the price reliability. 
cannot be sure who has checked a name. You cannot rely on that uh, correction as much. Although it's for you, it's basically, it's not labor intensive. <coughs> Which tools we might have, we might use? This is one of the possible tools we might use. And I suggest you to use this tool to check your names. <coughs> the names that you have, uh, that you have in your own listings. It is, for instance, a small tool will allow you to compare a list of names with it is it is known names. <coughs> you simply prepare a file, which is basically a list, just submit the file, and you will get a return of those names and the proper names that they should have been listed under, or whether they are known to it is or not. So this is the, the file I prepared. In this case, it's plants, so you all know what it is. We all know what it is. Even I know what these plants are, I think. Those are Mediterranean <coughs> plants. So I submit it to the ATIS checker. And <coughs> what I get is that there are matches in those in this list. Arnica montana is match, so it's known. It's a species. It's an accepted name. And books of Saint which is a bush in the region, is also species, it is, it is accepted. But there are names which might be wrong, or at least they don't appear in ITIS. For instance, Arnica Montanus, which is an alternate, alternate Latin name for Arnica Montana, which is wrong because Arnica is feminine and Montanus is masculine, so it's been wrongly spelled. So it will not be much in the 90s. So I can use this list here. I don't know the list. In my comparing list, I might see whether a species, a species name <coughs> matches the list or not, and then automatically mark that name as something I have to review. Okay? And those things here are also alternate spellings. Another taxon checker you might use for plants is iPlant. You might, or you might already know it. But it works similarly to it is, but it has an added value. Is that if I submit a list of the species to be checked, it will eventually check against a number of sources, such as Tropicos or the Department of Agriculture in the States. But then it will also mark things that will not understand and uh, tell you what is the level of disagreement <coughs> which you might use to again check manually on those species. If there is an overall score of one, you might be acceptably uh, confident that this is a right name, but anything that goes below might deserve some attention. This goes below to 94, but it has matched most of the name. Arnica Montanus has been matched to Arnica Montana. So you might actually download this list and use this number, filtering by say, okay, I want everything about 95%, and then accept. This is risky, but you can do it. And then accept the name in the list as a synonym or as a proper name for what you submitted. In this way, you could correct a lot. But still, remember, you are making a choice here. You are trusting that there is a magical number here that will save you a lot of work. Which magical number is this? I won't tell you. I'm not sure. I don't know. I can trust the one. No. I will distrust 50%. Prunus and Pervirens has been equated to a full genus. Okay, okay. 48. Buxus and Busus and Pervirens with S has been equated to the genus. Okay, okay. But what are all those? Well, 97, 99, those were basically misspellings, so they were detected. And this one, with a lower level was also detected. It's up to me to decide where I put the limit. But if done correctly, 
you may have a log list checked in the white names attributed in a very short time. Another possibility <coughs> here, low scores, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, see? Prunus has been equated to Pinus, completely different species, completely different genes. But the reliability was 0.4. So you might basically discard all the low matchings. Okay? And those are the ones that you might need to go one by one. TNRS <coughs> will accept a query in terms of the form of award services in which you simply write names that you want be, to be checked and the advantage is that you will get the results in terms of, of an XML file that you can quite easily parse and then get into a data sheet or whatever and you will get all the data there, right? so basically this can be done as a simple query which allows a lot of automati automatization because you can basically construct the queries and then submit a set of queries to the service. That's probably the <coughs> most efficient way to do this. But, was, but still, 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 this is a way to automate correct names and to reduce the spectrum of different names to a set of unique names that gives you a better idea of how many species you have in your data. <coughs> how you do that is up to you, but just remember that there are three golden rules in this. Always keep the originals. You never change the original in your wisdom. As Tom said, you always record what you do. You always record every single change. And if in doubt, just, just apply rules one and two. So whatever you do, you record what you do, so you can go back. Okay. You never miss or lose the original name. Never, ever. So what is the workflow for, sorry, for taxonomies? Get a unified list. Normally you do it by pivoting over names. So you get your list, you put your list in Excel if you have it. You do a pivot table that will say, they will tell you how many different cases or instances of any name are there. You try to check this pivot table against the taxonomy, a backbone. We'll do it in, as an exercise in the afternoon, probably, or tomorrow. We get the current accepted names. We move the spellings. We should be careful with homony homonyms and mismatches. And whatever, whatever doesn't fit in the, same, in the first pass, we have to review it manually. Another problem that I haven't covered in a very short of time is checking ranges. A species might be attributed a place which is outside the range. This can mean two things. Either it's an error <coughs> or it's a new paper for you. <laughs> so you have to check it manually. All right? It might extend the range of a species, but you have to be sure that the species was there. And that's about what I wanted to say about taxon names in much more time. Than I have.